I think it's interesting that you say that we need to get the citizens involved again. I wonder at what point did we disengage or were we ever as involved as we thought we were? Maybe it's uh, something that Jim Lennon can talk to us a bit about um, from his perspective, having been a <coughs> Fianna Fáil TD for Dublin North from 2002 to 2007. Um, there's, I suppose, an awful lot I could say about Jim, but I imagine, I was just wondering if Bertie Ahern was sitting here asked to introduce him, he'd probably say he was as vicious off the field as he was on it. <laughs> um, so, Jim, over to you. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, and thanks, John, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't suppose it's natural uh, habitat for a, a Fianna Fáil, even a former Fianna Fáil uh, member of the Oireachtas. I think it's very appropriate that we have this meeting this week and that you launch your report today. Uh, when a few weeks ago we had the situation where the euro was given a bit of a shock by a country GP on the Nor the nor northwestern extremity of Europe, uh, who was elected to his parliament with about 6,000 votes, and yet when he resigned, the ripples were felt throughout the financial institutions of the continent. And if that wasn't bad enough, we had the situation this week where we had a casino for Two Mile Boris or a hospital for a crossroads at Kenmare, or possibly a, a, a defecting Fianna Fáil TD or two because they didn't like the proposals in relation to the old age pensioners, or maybe even another TD defecting uh, because he was running out of different positions to take where he is seen to be fighting the good fight for the parish pump. I speak obviously of Michael Lowry, Jackie Healy Ray, Noel O'Flynn and Matty McGrath. And one thing I would ask is what do they have in common? Apart from, in my view, being chancers, being experts at the art of brinkmanship and of having undoubtedly hard necks, they are actually all elected representatives in our democracy in the same way as Jimmy McDade was. And the question arises of who elected them. And it's very easy for us to point our finger at other constituencies and say it was them. But in reality, it's us. It's our society who has elected them. Now, if that is the case, and I believe firmly that it is, there's either something wrong with the electoral system or there's something wrong with us. And if you take it that we design and control the electoral system, well then there's something wrong with us. Simple. Regardless of the constituency that these people are in. I want to give some background, if you don't mind, uh, as to where how I became involved in politics and God, I thought that was Brian Cowan there at the back. It's only Ron Ann Mullen. <laughs> uh, I spent seven years in the Oireachtas, two in the Shannad, five in the Dáil. And uh, I, I think it's appropriate at this stage that I should acknowledge the presence not only of Ron Ann Mullen, but also Joe O'Toole, two of, the, for me, the outstanding voices in the current Shannon and Joe has been an outstanding voice in the Shannon for many, many years. Uh, I'm not the product of any political dynasty, although my father, uh, approximately 30 years ahead of me, was a member of Fingal, what was then Dublin County Council. His father, about 50 years before him, was a member of a, a local council uh, during the British times. I had an uncle, a maternal uncle, who was a Labour TD, and my mother was a Michael Collins fanatic before that became fashionable. So I had it from everywhere at home. But the, one th the abiding thing for me in my upbringing and in my background was that if there was a problem in the locality, 
My father was a publican. My mother was a non-practicing solicitor. They became involved and they helped. And it was the Irish tradition of the metal brought into what was then a small town, Scarries in County Dublin, with a population of about, at that time, about 3,000 people. And it was about community and about community spirit. It was before the word activism really became fashionable or became current. I had the good fortune uh, to have, as uh, Justine hinted at, a, a little talent in sport, and I uh, was lucky enough to represent my country internationally. And it's, the week after I did that, I got a phone call from Fianna Fáil, would I stand for them in the general election? Great. First priority for an aspiring politician in Ireland was to be an international rugby player. Uh, I declined. A couple of years later, I was offered one of the 11 nominees to the Shannon, to the Shannon which I declined again. No offence to, to the Shannon Joe. Uh, I was approached again in 97 to stand to share a ticket with one Rayfield P. Burke, which I politely declined again. And the reason I had declined the other two offers was because they were made by the same Rayfield P. Burke. And when Bertie took over uh, the leadership of Fianna Fáil, he asked me again, and I told him that I wouldn't share a ticket with Ray Burke. And he didn't even ask me why. <laughs> I can clearly remember the conversation and where we held it and what was going on around us at the time. And the interesting thing about it, looking back on it was that in classic Bertie fashion, we were in his kitchen in the famed St. Luke's. We were looking at the six o'clock news on the television. And I had told him that I wouldn't stand. And we were, we were standing there shoulder to shoulder looking at it. And he couldn't eyeball me. He couldn't look me straight in the face. And it didn't strike me at the time. But it's a memory now looking back on it that for me was very, very much a taste of what was to come and the lack of capacity in Irish politics generally but in Fianna Fáil in particular to talk straight and to have honest and open dialogue. I have been accused many times of, in fact people see it as a compliment, uh, that whether I'm speaking about rugby or about politics, I'm congratulated for talking straight and calling it as it is. And like, what other way is there? If you look at society today and look at the collapse of the pillars of civilization as we have known it, the church, commerce, and politics, when I say collapse of those three pillars, I mean in, in the context of popular respect for those three pillars of society. They've all been blown away. They haven't been replaced by anything yet. And that, for me, is a very, very dangerous place for any society to find itself. And when you think of society, the essence of society is social communication. The essence of communication to me is honesty and the essence of honesty is respect for the person or the entity with which you are sharing the dialogue. And it's no coincidence, I'm no Latin scholar, but it's no coincidence that the word respect and republic are fairly close in the English language and I reckon if you go back a lot further, Joe, would you be up to that? But I reckon if you go back a lot further, you'll find that their derivation is fundamentally the same. And that is what we have lost. And I immediately put my hand up as a member of a Fianna Fáil parliamentary party for seven years and say that there are things of which I am ashamed. I have no 
difficulty in saying that. I have difficulty in living with it at times. I have no difficulty in saying it. Unlike some of my former colleagues. <laughs>